Today's the day, Beamer Fest. Travel a thousand miles to be here. It never ceases to amaze me how much we can kill a hotel room in just a few hours of being awake. We were gonna clean the car before the meet, but uh, we don't know our car washes around here. If we drive by one, we'll clean it. If not, we apologize. We're about 50 miles away from the event center and we told everybody we'd be there in about 20 minutes. So we are right on time. B is for, B is for build time. If I ever tell you I'm gonna be somewhere, just expect me to be at least 20 minutes late. Unless we're in my hometown, then I'm always on time. It took almost an hour to get in, but we have arrived. There's race car things going on and I wanna go do them in this car so badly. I just don't know how, I should've looked into the event. Even just the littlest amount. Chelsea's gotta put our new decals on. All right, let's go take a look around. We haven't been filming enough. I apologize. We're an hour and a half in and we just really have been just meeting people, talking with people, having a great time, uh, looking at a lot of really cool cars. But you know, sometimes you just don't have a lot to say. You're like, wow, that's a fantastic car. Uh, but anyways, thanks to everybody that's stopped by and said hi, I appreciate it. Uh, we're on our way to some vendor booths right now. I'm gonna see if any of the people that sponsor me currently are here at the show just to meet them face to face um, and maybe see if I can meet any new companies that are interested. There's so many cool track cars here, it's so fantastic. And then I think after that, we're gonna look at like, I wanna show you guys some of the stuff that we plan on doing, like some inspirational stuff that we plan on doing with the Z build and stuff like that. Chelsea found a Lightning McQueen car she's interested in. We'll go check that out. So, so far we met a re one really cool company, Specialized Germany, and uh, it caught my attention because they had that um, S85 V10 out front that I showed you guys just a second ago. I met the owner of that company. Well, shout out to the employees that said hi to me, making me look good in front of the boss. But uh, I met the owner of that company and they, they get a lot of salvage wreck cars in and stuff like that. And uh, that might be a great connection if we decide to make another buy for anything in the German world or possibly might be a good line on an exotic. Hmm? Hmm? Should we up our game a little bit and battle Tavares for the thousand horsepower wars? I don't know if we have time for that, but it could be a cool way to get some of uh, the other cars that we're looking to get to later on. What's your name? Alan. Alan? Yeah, Alan. Alan, thank you so much. No problem, man. Alan brought me a beer. <laughs> it's not a cupcake, but it's going down. Yeah. Thanks to Viral Vinyl Wraps for hooking us up. And we got you guys in mind if we need to wrap anything. No more Chelsea and I getting frustrated at wraps. Oh look, it's Pandem USA. Hi, that was a lot of fun. I met a lot of cool companies I look forward to uh, working with in the future. There's nothing better than when I'm talking to a new company and I'm explaining what I, what I do and the channel and stuff like that. And then one of you guys, the viewers, comes up to me and is like, hey man, can I get a picture and stuff like that? It's really cool. It makes us look good because it makes like makes it look like somebody actually gives a crap about what we do. So thanks to everybody. Like my favorite part about coming here and the reason that I'm gonna continue to come into things like this, period, it doesn't show up on film much, it doesn't look impressive or anything, but it's meeting all of you guys, saying hi to everybody, taking pictures with everybody. That is by far like the coolest part. So the next thing I want to do is uh, there's a few things that I've seen on a couple different builds here that I want to make sure that we capture and make sure that we do on the 240 M5 build. So let's uh, go ahead and like look around and find a couple of those things. I'll point them out, explain what they are and why I want to do them. So these dudes, these dudes are out here. They're they're cooking for follows. They're cooking for follows. What is it? Where what are people following? Oh, shit. Right here. Follow my homie. He's making me a burger right now, and you're gonna give me a beer, right? You got a beer for me? Oh, a sip, a sip. All right, don't follow these kids. Oh, no. That's it. They lost it. First thing.
first thing that I'm thinking is one of the most obvious that we're not going to be able to forget is obviously a nice looking wide body kit for the Z. So we need to stance the Z out multiple inches on each side, probably three to four inches on each side. This car is a really good example of how to do it. It's absolutely beautiful. It looks so good. This car, I think, is bringing it out probably five inches on each side, so we don't need to do it quite that much. We're probably looking at more like three to four, depending on the wheel size that we run on each side for the Z. Second thing I wanna do, quick, easy to explain, carbon things. Now, I'm not gonna do too many carbon things if we don't need to. If the weight of the car starts to land around 2,000, 2,500 pounds, I'm not gonna waste a bunch of time and money on carbon things, because I think the money's better spent in other ways, but carbon things nonetheless. Especially if we need it for aesthetic reasons. If we need it for looks, we're doing it. Full on carbon. Next thing I want to make sure that we do not forget to do is something similar to what this car is doing right here. So obviously we have a roll cage coming into our car. We're going to have a full cage, so it's going to go through there too. But right here, they have this beautiful like cross bracing that I really, really love the look of. And then they have that gusseting right in the middle there too. Then just like, it makes it even better. And then it attaches to the harness bar that we're going to need to do as well. So all of this, like this whole combination that they have there, here, I think is just beautiful beautifully done and then it's backed up by some really really nice uh, backing like aluminum sheeting that we're gonna need to do in the Z as well so this is a great example of a best case scenario of how we would make the Z look I think everything here should be like looked at very very carefully and we should try and imitate what they did here fabrication wise very very closely to have the best outcome that we can next up triple wing gang I have no idea how we're gonna design the 240 but if we can figure out a way to have some sort of a lip to wing, maybe not lip to double wing, but lip to wing, that'd be sick. The next few things I want to do, I captured all in one car. This is an amazingly built car from CA Tuned. I'll put a link to their website and their Instagram in the description below. Go show them some love if you like this car. So, ITBs, we've already talked about ITBs. They have an amazing, like, a really, really clean looking setup with the ITBs. Um, they have the front strut supports. I want to build our own and this is a really good example of something that we could build on our own. You see how it's like basically pretty simple stuff. You know, we could buy a circular piece, do our chops, dual bars running across. I really like the shape of that, the look of that. That's really, really clean. That's something that we could build ourselves. The other thing that I really like that I saw is, is I mean, it's just a simple thing, but um, it's just this right here. How they just took this, these uh, couple pieces of sheet metal, nicely painted them, riveted them up, covered up any of the other ugly parts of the engine bay and what they came out with was just this like that mixed with the ITBs and you just get this super 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 clean clean engine bay overall amazingly clean build the other thing that we obviously have to do are these roll cage the roll cage with a dimple die gussets coming up the side here I love the look of that and that's something that we have to have to integrate into the Z build as well also definitely look for the roll cage bars coming through the firewall coming down through the firewall and into the strut tower whatever strut tower we develop we're going to need to connect it to ours because we have that whole tube frame chassis as well just got back to the car i don't feel like we really filmed enough but beamer fest is wrapped up it's 4 30 right now they, they they end at four so so that's a wrap we had a lot of fun it was so cool to meet everybody this is just like a reminder that i need to be at more meets more often but i will try i will try thank you guys all for coming by and saying hi this was a fun event and we will definitely be here next year but we're gonna bring the 240z next year which will be weird i want to enter battle of the beamers with an with a dotson not supposed to do burnouts guys on the way out just a reminder let's go listen to the m5 in the tunnel Chelsea and I are on our way back to Disney to go get some dinner. Uh, I'm trying to film the car a little bit more because a lot of people have very valid comments that we spend the whole day dealing with a car and we never show it. But uh, a lot of people also asked, what are we doing with the car as far as the future stuff? And to be honest, it's pretty close to done. It's gonna get the suspension that's currently on the 240Z setup. That way it goes back to stock because this car has a lot of dynamic suspension components um, that it needs the stock suspension or else it complains about. So we'll get this thing back to stock suspension. And a lot of people commented on wheels. And if Chelsea finds a set of Koenig wheels that she likes that also uh, cover these massive brake calipers on this car, if we can find a set that she likes that clears those, then I'm sure Koenig would hook us up 
Uh, so we'll do some browsing around and maybe we'll get this car a new set of wheels. I have this thing where like I pig out every night that I'm in a hotel room and uh, tonight is no different. So you guys know the drill. It's spicy, spicy bean burrito, my number one fave. My backup fave that you guys that watch me on Twitch know, cup of noodles. But here's the thing, we don't have a microwave in our hotel room. So I'm going to be for build some stuff together. And I'm going to show you guys in case you get stuck in a situation like this is an informative how-to episode. I like every episode I do to be a real serious DIY. What's up guys? Chris Cook here. Get yourself a 7-Eleven Red Hot Burrito but don't have any way to cook it because you're trapped in a hotel room. Don't worry because I got you covered. Most hotel rooms come with an iron. If you didn't get an iron with your hotel room, you might have stayed at too cheap of a hotel. Call down to your local front desk and they might have an iron for you. And if you don't have a local front desk, just hit zero on your telephone. <laughs> the laws of thermodynamics and science, aluminum is a very conductive metal. It spreads out heat very evenly. So wrap your burrito in 20 to 25 feet of aluminum foil and then place it on the grill. With any leftover aluminum, make a tin foil hat to keep the aliens out of your brain. While your burrito is cooking away, it's time to move on to our noodle course. Most hotel rooms have a coffee maker. Once again, if you don't have a coffee maker, you might be too cheap. Now we have a a weird, a weird one here, but that won't stop us. Coffee equals beans plus hot water. Soup equals noodles plus hot water. Therefore, a coffee maker is basically a soup maker minus beans. <laughs> Don't let your noodles overflow. Be, be careful not to get burned. Okay, there we go. While your noodles are soaking, it's probably time to just go ahead and carefully flip your burrito over on the skillet there and let it rest for another five to 10 minutes. That burrito was a steaming pile of success. I'm so happy about that. That's it guys, we had some fun tonight. Thanks so much to everybody that came out and said hi at Beamer Fest. I had a blast and I got a lot of inspiration. Uh, so thanks thanks so much for that. Are you you're really gonna steal my burrito now? <laughs> she stole my noodles and no, she's stealing my burrito. Anyways, that's a wrap guys. We're gonna take one day break to drive home tomorrow and then we're gonna be back working on the Z and I hope you guys will join us then. Thank you guys so much, I'll see you soon. Peace.